what I'd like you to say a bit more about is is the high street and what you what you see as the role of the high street in in the city. Well, anecdotally, I remember moving to Exeter, which is I think a city of about one hundred and twenty thousand, and on the second day of my living, me living in Exeter, which was also my arrival in the UK about 10 years ago, I was walking up the high street and I was already recognizing faces that I hadn't, that I'd seen the day before, which like in a city of comparable size, Esslingen near Stuttgart, 90,000 people, I spend a lot of time there, um, that would be virtually unthinkable that you would encounter, it would have to be a real, real chance encounter that you see the same person twice in two days because the, the layout of the city is different. There, there are squares and more con- concentric design, whereas on the high street you have virtually all the traffic funneled through a linear, sort of on a linear axis, isn't it? And so I found that quite striking. I thought, blimey, this is a, it's got a, it's not a huge city exit, but it's sizable. And I kind of recognized two, three, four faces on the second day I'm coming. I've seen this person, I've seen that person. The, you know? And the they were not buskers or people who would play their thing every day. They were just people, you know. I just recognized the faces. Because I'm but good with faces anyway. So. Right. <laughs> just just to, to, to explain something that we haven't, we haven't mentioned before, that, that of the three images, one, one is actually from Sidwell Street and one is on the corner of 4th Street. Yeah. So your idea of the high street is, is quite a long, extended high street. As yeah. Would. Yeah. Yeah. One, one, one could, uh, 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 you know, I think describe Sidwell and Four Street as down market versions of High Street, but essentially they're on the same. It's the, it's the, same, on the same It's the same trajectory. It's the same axis. You know, in terms of you know urban design, it's it's one single line, and it's a lineup of shops, and it's a business mile, and it's one. It's really. I mean, I, I see this as one thing, so I didn't have a problem including Sidwell Street and this, the actual core of High Street, which is, you know, big corporate chains, stores and bank, and then some small independent retailers at the bottom. It's quite a nice portraiture of, you know, what the city is like at the moment. Um, yes, they're not the high, high Street technically, but really, I think they are the High Street. The High Street, to me, starts at the Odeon Roundabout, and it ends down at the bottom, um, at the end, bottom of 4th Street. So I've included these parts of it. So you don't think the the city walls or the medieval model which must be there somewhere that, that, that doesn't seem strong to you well let's put it that way the, the concept of the high street was new to me when I moved to, to this country um, in, in the German cities that I know th- there is also business miles which is long streets with plenty of shops lined up amongst them you know pedestrianized areas etc but um, they tend to be less central to the to the layout of the city. They're not like the key feature in the same way that you would find it in the UK. And central is also an interesting word here because I would argue that due to its linearity, the high street itself has no center. <laughs> <laughs> in Exeter, there's the Cathedral Green, which is a center, obviously. One of several centers. There's a bit of a center in Princess A, you know, but the high street itself kind of, you know, the, the linearity of it refuses uh, a centre and this of course has aesthetic and also cultural implications that I find really fascinating and that's me the artist now being interested in that as a form you know Um, and then there's also this whole thing about the nature of you know global capital so to speak you know that the the, I mean the the, the rise of corporate chain stores you know they um, they they shape the aesthetics the corporate branding will be the same you know Um, the the logos are the same everywhere um, of one and the same you know the McDonald's logo will be the same everywhere basically so um that corporate branding that had sort of become um, omnipresent and um, they are very much similar across the world now and of course again that's up to us how we value this you know so thinking about retail could you describe how the, how the gallery scene works as as retail so the the, the, the actual commercial formats if, if it's okay to put it this way in which which your work is is on offer well, funnily enough, I've been making a living as an artist mainly through um, commissions um, over the last however many years. I've only very recently started producing work that actually can be shown in galleries. So much of the work I've previously done, there may be performances, there may be uh, one-off um, events, you know. So no, I haven't got a great deal of experience how the gallery scene works. Not yet, but I'm about to find out. So do, do you think there's other examples of your your... your method whereby people commissioning parts of a work and it gradually gets formed <laughs> as, as part of okay, that. Okay, yeah, this particular work is not a commercial model. 
I mean, I'd be, you know, <laughs> I'd be in a dire place, you know, if I tried to make a living like that. This is about inclusion. You know, the pricing is about inclusion. You know, let's take a two pound fifty size commission. You know, I'll spend almost an hour, you know, uh, printing, posting, and packaging it. <laughs> that, you know, that doesn't even include the materials so no this is not a business model this is about inclusion about giving as many people as possible access to a piece of art that already has an exhibition history and that will go to other places across the country so yeah okay. uh, I think it's a worthwhile cause I've been listening and not chipping in and I think it's very good and I even went over and had a look this morning I thought it depicted the hustle and bustle very well I grant I only saw one bit of it uh, um uh, Oh, sorry, I That's just right, thought no, I'd no, I think I think it's good for you, good for you to comment. I'm glad you went and had a look. And um, I think JD will come back. He's in he's in another room. He's checking out our computers at the moment. But I know he's been a, a few times now. And um, well, we're probably like like the other people who've, who've commented that it it makes more sense as more of the images are clear. Because yeah. when when they're on the screen with the back lighting, it's uh, it's very striking, isn't it? It's a very solid image. You can't you can't really get an idea of it just from the woodcuts from and imagining how it's going to be. Just looking at the plate, no, you can't. No, and it's always guesswork. I mean, those plates, the tremendous amount of work has gone into them. Talking about three hundred hours of plate, roughly. I think it's probably more than a thousand hours of actual carving time that has just gone into the carving. Doesn't account for the printing yet. Um, but um, what 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 I thought that was one of one experience I had when I stepped back from the first plate after I'd carved it. You 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 do a fairly um, an uh, everyday scene, you know, uh, which is basically a bunch of elderly people at a bus stop waiting for the bus. That's one of the central plates. That's the lunchtime plate, so to speak. And then you step back after 300 hours of carving and you have 300 hours of carving looking back at you as well as a daily life scene. And I thought that really hopefully does something to the imagery, you know, that sort of elevates it. And it's also a contemplation aid. But then again, you know, I shouldn't talk too much about it. People should go and see it. Well, sure. <laughs> and, they've, and they've got until Saturday. They have. Yeah, and I thought it was a well worth exhibition. So, if you're in Exeter, go to the Royal Albert Memorial Museum and look at the Any High Street exhibition. Uh, is there anything else you want to say now, Will, or shall well, I put some music? No, on? I think we'll, we'll come. We'll come back with some uh, some other ideas in a, in a little bit. But I think some music would be an excellent thing. Okay, because this show is all about the music. So here is a bit of Alice DJ. We're better off alone. <laughs> 